Okay, yeah, look, I don't have a funny intro. That was just unfreaking believable, and I have no idea how we did that. Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Rangers. And Rangers win 6 2 over the Boston Bruins in Madison Square Garden with not many, but with some fans back in the stadium. Um, h- how do you look that sloppy against Philly, who was also short on a lot of players, and yet massacre the Bruins? The only, the only explanation I have is the fans must have done something. Because 6-2 Rangers. We scored more in the second and third period against the Bruins than they did against us in the first two games in regulation. That's okay. Uh, Recap, I need to actually talk words, don't I? Uh, So Keandre Miller was back tonight. I thought he played pretty well. Um, Aside from one penalty he took, I thought that was, you know, I'll give it to him. Uh, you know, he hasn't played in a while. So getting right into it, first period, the first, like, 15 minutes, nothing really happens. But then with 6.44 left in the period, Julian Gauthier, uh, apparently Ryan Lingard had the assist. I don't remember how. I don't know if he passed it or if he dropped it off. But Julian Gauthier gets it, takes it out near a face-off dot, and then just snipes it right past Dugarask. And the Rangers are up one nothing. They score first. I was in kind of disbelief at that moment because I didn't think it went in. It was such a quick in-and-out goal. I I didn't think it went in. And so I was just kind of sitting there like, what? Did he score? He did. Rangers go up 1-0. 4-33 left in the period. Keandre Miller takes a hooking penalty again. It wasn't a good penalty to take, obviously. No penalty is good to take. But I'm going to give Keandre Miller a little bit of a break because he hasn't played in a while. So I don't want to be too hard on the kid. This was his first game back in, like couple weeks I do believe it's been a while since we've had Keandre Miller so that was really it for the first period I thought we played really well it was sort of the same style of hockey we had played against the Bruins in the first two games against him which was not a lot of scoring through the first period Um, a lot of movement you know both teams exchanged short stints with the puck in each other's zones and then just a lot of passing back and forth, trying to get zone entrances and not really succeeding the only difference is we usually were able to stop them because we had all of our defensemen, and now we had Miller back, who hasn't played in a long time. We didn't have Truba, and we had Jack Johnson playing a large part of the game, which kind of depressed me. Anyway, on to the second period. Almost immediately six seconds into the second period, Jack Johnson takes a high-sticking penalty, but for some reason, I genuinely don't know why they call it on Kevin Rooney. Um, I, I really don't know how that happens. I mean, his stick wasn't even up. When it happened, and Jack Johnson was right there and just bammed the guy in the face. But for some reason, Kevin Rooney gets called for it. So Jack Johnson didn't take that penalty, which I was kind of irritated about, because I would have not preferred Jack Johnson on the penalty. Granted, nothing bad came of it, but I thought that was kind of a a bad, you know, mistake. I thought the officiating also was kind of sketchy in the game. Granted, it helped the Rangers, so I'm not going to be too upset. But, you know, that is something that was bad. 17-28 left in the period. Rangers get something going. So... Kreider is along the boards, and he's doing, you know, normal Kreider board work. So he gets it out. He takes it into the zone. Almost immediately, he just hands it off to uh, Lexi Lafreniere. He carries it in a few more feet, and then with this gorgeous setup over to Ryan Strom, and Strom just blasts it home, and it's 2 nothing Rangers relatively quickly into the second period, and I'm like, oh, we, we look really freaking good. We actually have a shot tonight. We might actually win against the Bruins. So I was getting pretty uh, pretty hyped at that moment. Now, a little bit later on, uh, 1558, Pasternak had this gorgeous setup for Paris, or per, I can't say that name, Bergeron. I'm, I, I can pronounce that one. And that makes it 2-1. Both Boston goals were pretty nice goals, I will say. So they make it a one-goal game, and I'm a little concerned, but I'm like, you know what, it's fine. We still have a goal lead. We have all the fans in our favor, which is a positive. Not all of them, obviously. There were a few Boston fans, but you get my drift. I'm like, all right, we got a chance. So 1306 left in the period, and the Rangers get their first power play, courtesy of Ryan Lingard getting a bloody nose, which was pretty nice. Uh, we ended up not doing anything with that, and then at 850 or 837, excuse me, uh, Brendan Lemieux took a cross-checking penalty, so they get their power play, or they get a power play. We killed it off, thankfully. Then a little bit later on, uh, 543 left in the game. Brad Marchand takes a high-sticking penalty. And we get another power play. We ended up not doing anything with it, but be that as it may. So, later on, minute 18 left in the period. This is where the period got very fun. Um, 
Boston takes a tripping penalty, and we get a power play. And boy, do we cash in quickly. Rangers win the faceoff in the Boston zone, and it gets back to Fox. So Fox just hands it off over to Ryan Strom. He quickly passes it back over to Fox. Fox holds it for a split second, takes a shot from almost the blue line, and a beautiful tip-in from Colin Blackwell, who continues to amaze me this season, just sort of coming out of nowhere. And the Rangers are up 3-1. And I believe that was Colin Blackwell's fourth goal of the year. It's something kind of high like that. It's kind of crazy how well he's doing. And then, just a matter of seconds later, uh, Rangers, you know, they're doing work. They got it. Kreider's working behind the net, and then he sort of just takes it out and gets almost even with the net, takes a shot. I thought it was going to 100% be blocked, and it goes in for a 4-1 lead against Boston going into the third, which I'm not a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. I think that's kind of obvious, but I'm like, oh, I don't like that number. I don't like that going into the third period against Boston, and I don't even have the PTSD that Toronto Maple Leafs fans have. Now, that's almost the end of the second period. Now, I think we can all, you know, sort of remove our Rangers hats, our Ranger goggles for a moment here, and talk about the awful officiating in the last few seconds of the third, or the second period, excuse me. So Jack Johnson, and I would say this, the game was very physical all night. So, eight seconds left, Jack Johnson goes up to Trent Frederick, and just cross-checks him like crazy in the back of the head from behind. Now, obviously that's a penalty. You can't go up to someone and just cross-check him in the back of the head for no reason, other than, well, it was a physical game. So that... 100%. That should be a penalty. I'm never going to argue that. And at first, I didn't even know what happened. I just saw him on the ground, and I saw Jack Johnson sort of getting roughed up over by the bench. And I'm like, ah, what happened? I saw that, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's really, really uncalled for. I don't know why you did that. I understand it was a physical game tonight against Boston. I understand that we have the rivalry, and it was kind of renewed in the last game against Boston, but that is completely uncalled for. Why are you doing that, Jack Johnson? You're just going to give them a power play. I thought. But for some reason... Trent Frederick, I guess, hitting the stick on the ground because he got cross-checked in the back of the head, I guess cross counts as slashing because old Jack Johnson makes his way on over to the penalty box, but then so does Trent Frederick. Again, I am a Rangers fan. That is very clear from everything about me. I don't understand how that bad of a call can be made. That was awful. Um, The fact that that was four on four and not a Boston power play is insane to me. I, that was just really, really rough officiating. And I thought that was kind of an awful call, Uh, which I had to talk about because it was kind of insane. So we end the third period. It's four on four, but we are up four one and I'm, I'm feeling it. I am pumped up. I'm like, all right, we are actually going to win this game against Boston. Uh, And all we have to do at this point is just hold down the fort. You know, it's pretty simple at this point. Just, Don't allow in three goals, and we wouldn't do that. So, early on in the third period, 18-15 in the period, Fox has this fantastic pass. He's going, he's deep in the zone. He's almost to the net. He passes it over to Butchnevich, who just almost has an entire empty side because Tuka Rask is playing for Fox, and Butchnevich just tips it in. And the Rangers are up 5-1 over Boston! Boston! Debatably, debatably, I don't feel this way, but a lot of people do. The best team in hockey! And they're up 5-1! And I was in utter disbelief. And then, very quickly afterwards, 16-17 left in the period. Rangers have the puck behind the net. Brendan Smith has it, and he decides, you know what, we've been having really good luck, you know, actually being aggressive. I'm just going to do a pass off the boards and go down and see what happens in the neutral zone. So he does this big pass off the boards, and Kevin Rooney and Johnny Brunetsoff, or Brunetsky, I'm probably butchering that, forgive me, they're streaking down on what would eventually turn out to be a two-on-one. Kevin Rooney grabs the puck and says, thank you very much, Brendan. They carry it into the zone, and if another fantastic pass over to Brune- Brunzenski, I, I'm going to butcher that name until I don't, and he just tips it in for his first goal as a Ranger, and they're up 6-1 over Boston! And I am buzzing right now, just hype as can be, and I'm like, oh my god, we're up 
6-1 over Boston. What is happening? How is this team doing it? And this team, think of everything we're missing. Like, think of this night, right? Now, obviously, it might have played out differently. I understand that. But think of this game if we, in addition, had Panarin and Capocaco and Philip Heedle and Jacob Truba. We could have put we could have put 10 on the board, maybe. Maybe I'm just insane right now because it was an unbelievable game. But this, this is a very not-all-there Rangers team, and we came out and blew the doors off of Boston. So a little bit later, the party kind of stopped to break up four consecutive goals all belonging to the Rangers. The Bruins score at 12.09 left of the period. David Pasternak takes this big drive where he was kind of all alone. Georgiev stops it, and I think he had it somewhere under his arms or in his glove or under his blocker or in his pads or somewhere there, but it was a rebound, and Brad Marchand does a Brad Marchand thing and just kind of tosses it on the net to make it 6-2. to But it wouldn't matter, because that would be the way the score stayed. Not much else happens at 4:01. Brendan Lemieux draws a penalty when he's making this big drive towards the net, so they get called for, I believe it was hooking to give the Rangers another power play. We didn't do anything with it, but it didn't matter. The Rangers won... 6-2 to two over Boston. Now, obviously, I don't think... No, I'm sort of cynical, right? I don't think that a home field advantage... These are professional athletes, right? I don't think that normally it plays that much into effect. I think it does in the playoffs. But during the regular season, I'm not sure how much a home field advantage really plays into it. Now, granted, there are exceptions. I think, obviously, uh, the Seahawks are the most famous exception to that rule and the way they can be the 12th. Man, I understand that, but I'm saying generally speaking, I don't think it plays that big of an effect. There is no other logical reason that you can look at this. We played awful against the Flyers, and the Flyers got murdered against Boston the other evening. Uh, on Sunday, the Lake Tahoe game, they got murdered. I think it was 7-2 to two or something along those lines. It was an awful, awful game for the Flyers. Then they came in, and granted they didn't, well, I guess I shouldn't say murdered us, but they won pretty comfortably. We had a really sloppy game. And now tonight we went out and just blew the doors off of Boston. It was kind of insane. Our defense played better. Our offense was incredible. Six goals. I mean, how can you complain about that? Georgiev looked really good. And I just... This game was insane. So, goals, there's quite a few of them. Julian Gauthier got a goal. Ryan Strom had a goal. Colin Blackwell had a goal. Chris Kreider had a goal. Uh, Butch Nevich had a goal. And Brzezinski had a goal. Now, on to the assists. Because there's quite a few of them. Uh, Ryan Strom had two assists. That was a three-point night for Mr. Ryan Strom. Uh, he was the star of the game, according to the NHL. And I'm not going to argue it. Uh, Ryan Lingrid had two assists. Alexi Lafreniere had his first assist, almost as if he heard all of the people memeing on him yesterday, all the Islanders fans saying that now their goalie had more assists this year than Lafreniere. Now you can't say that, buddy boys. So Laffy had an assist. Uh, Adam Fox had two assists. Ke Ryder had an assist. Kevin Rooney had an assist. Brendan Smith had an assist. And Georgiev was 31-33. And, I mean, what do you even say? We haven't been able to find 13 minutes worth of stuff to say. But this was a fantastic game by the Rangers. I mean, hopefully Filipino will be back Sunday. If Capocaco, I don't know if he will be. I know he's still on uh, the beer flu protocol. But if he'd be back and Filipino, we could win back-to-backers against Boston. I There's really nothing I can even complain about tonight. I'm just happy. I feel unreal. This was a fantastic team win. Um... And it was obviously awesome to see all the fans back in the stadium, even though it wasn't a lot. It was really nice to see that again. And yeah, that's all I have to say. I'll see you guys Sunday against Boston. The game's at noon Eastern Standard Time. I'll see you after that. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Rangers.